That's like from the process stage and less the hustle stage, which is what we're doing right now. So one is like literally tracking how long every sale takes. So our average is four and a half months. Um, and we know that and we, we plan for that. Um, sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer. Um, you know, the, there's you know, a sales funnel that we track. So at the very top, you've got, um, you've got leads that are coming in, inbound leads. Um, and then you have prospects, um, so people who are like qualified leads. And then um, every company has their own sales funnel based on what they're selling. Um, but uh, you then, you know, you've got a salesperson talking to them. You put them on, we put them on a trial of our software. We follow up. Um, and it's a whole sort of systematic process. And you track how long it takes for people to go from the top to the bottom. You track, um, you know, where your leads are coming from. So for us, it's conferences. About 55% of our leads come from meeting them at conferences, speaking at conferences, that kind of stuff. Um, we have a small percent that just comes to our website. So it's really about understanding that process and funnel and then um, and like optimizing it so that you can make the most sales. Um, the other interesting thing is there's something called lead nurturing where if they're not going to buy now, you sort of keep them around. You guys have probably all, now that I know too much about this, I always get those emails from like software companies that are like, hey, we saw you looked at our website. Like, are you ready to talk to us now? And then they, they follow up very regularly. And so we do something similar, although not as annoying where we try and say, hey, here's a new study we published on video. You know, we just want to make sure you were aware of it. You know, let us know if you want to talk. And so we just sort of keep in touch with people, keep educating them, um, keep learning from them. A lot of times we'll say, hey, they'll come back to us and say, hey, we're not ready to buy now, but do you offer this? And we say, yes, here, take a free sample. Um, and so it's just about that. But yeah, B2B is a very different animal than B2C. Um, and someone was telling me recently there's a difference between like, fishing with a spear and fishing with a net. And B2B is very, like, it, it can be very like fishing with a spear. Like, we're, you know, we're going to try and work with all the major studios. We're going to try and work with all the major TV networks. Like, we know who we're trying to target, and then we have to go after the right people. So those four months, and then four months can be a long time. Is it mostly the, they're just dealing with a trial, or is it about negotiating, or, or what? Um, more like meeting them, uh, telling them what we offer, putting them on a trial, talking to the right people inside an organization. Um, the contract stage it depends if it's a major company or not and what that's like. It's, we don't, we don't, I mean, sometimes there's negotiations that have to happen, but we have like a rate card that we sell. So, you know, we can just say, these are the, th these are the prices. Um, so really, it's less about the negotiations and, mo and the more time is just spent getting to know people, educating them on what we do, getting the right people on a trial. Um, you know, we could, we could have given a trial and a demo to one person, but really it should be this other person that's using it. So finding that and sort of, you know, establishing yourself in an organization. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, thank you so much for coming in. My question has to do with um, advice on closing deals quicker. Mm -hmm. um, where do you think there's room to kind of condense a little bit of process and keep them just as happy as if you drive it for a few months? So sometimes you don't have a choice. You know, it's just the length of the process and that's it. I think I... One thing is, you know, if you're fighting over like a few pennies or something like that, I just, uh, actually, I, I don't always give in, but like, you know, if, it, if it's not worth your time to keep fighting for, not fighting, but negotiation, then you say, okay. And it's like, you know, you'd rather drop the price of $1,000 than get, spend 10 months talking to them. Um, I think other ways might be making sure you're talking to the right person. There's a whole like technique to sales around like who is the gatekeeper, who are the users, who is the champion, um, and making sure you find someone internally who's your champion and can like sell for you when you're not there. Um, and so you could waste a lot of time talking to. Um, so what what what's your business, or what do you what do you? We we're a mobile app, but we also have a physical product we sell okay. to more like bigger groups. Um, and so it's not really that we're. Um, negotiating over price as much if we are very lenient with that yeah. you know as if, as we're starting to grow but more of the um, it's taking like three weeks for legal so we're like all right let's just place the order get the order already so as soon as legal signs it you know we'll like put in production immediately or let's start you know production a little bit so we can get this done. right that's interesting so um so that's risky with starting it before papers are signed if it's a huge cost to you Oh, well that's interesting. That sounds like a good strategy. I think, yeah, I, I was gonna say, uh, the advice I was gonna give, which I'm not sure is relevant, is, you know, 
fi often finding the user who, who's like going to be using your product is not good enough because they need to like say get permission up the chain of command. So the sooner you can get up to the top to ask for permission, the faster the deal is going to go. Um, the other thing is, I guess you know, as the business grows, you'll be able to keep more inventory on hand, and you'll be able to like take the money that you make and invest it in the business. So it will be quicker to sell whatever you have because it will be ready on hand. Um, I don't know. Does that answer that? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's a tricky thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting. You have. It sounds like you have like, you know, retail or bricks and mortar locations as well as other channels as well. So you know, over time, when you're optimizing, when you're more in the process stage and not the hustle, it's going to be more about like which channel of ours is the most profitable. Like, where is the quickest lead time? Where is the quickest like sales time? Should we just focus on this as opposed to all these things and start like optimizing and figuring it out? Maybe can I do a short add-on? Yeah. Help yeah. The question better. Like, maybe what materials do you prepare? Or have you found that there's some materials that like, prevent you from like doing those demos, or you know, you don't have to go and put as much like personal time. They can just like. Yeah. So, well, one thing is. Um, we instituted like when people sign up for a trial, we ask a lot of questions like, how many people are in your organization? Like, what's your job title? Like, what, um, you know, not too many questions because we still want them to fill it out, but you ask the questions that you know uh, are like signs to you about whether they're going to quickly move or not, right? Like, if it's, and, or like even a question that's like, are you ready to buy right now? Or what, what stage are you in your decision process? Like, are you ready to buy? Are you collecting information? Are you, and so if you ask those questions, you'll know like where to put your time. You're like, oh, this person says they're not ready to buy. I'm going to put them on hold. This person is like got a 50-person company and is looking for a solution right now. I'm going to target that person. So basically, asking enough questions and the right questions ahead of time so that you can prioritize your time.